So working a ski season is a lot of fun, as I've said before. There's a lot of excitement and there's a lot of adventure. But it's not always like that. What happens when it all goes balls up? Hi, I'm Matt from Bram Ski Vlogs and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you some examples and stories of when things go wrong on a ski season. Now I'm going to be talking from personal experience working as a holiday rep for two seasons and a chalet concierge. If you're someone who goes on ski trips quite regularly or you're thinking of doing a ski season then you're going to find this quite interesting and quite eye-opening. But before we jump into today's video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and and leave a comment right at the end also. Okay, let's kick things off. So first of all, staff and guest injuries. Especially during my first season, this happened a lot to staff and guests alike. Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, this can end your holiday or your ski season short. And in others, it requires a trip to hospital, which is not always easy to do because hospitals are not close to ski resorts. Concussions, dislocated shoulders, broken sprained wrists, broken ribs, legs, ankles are all common injuries in the mountains and they tend to happen quite a lot at the busiest periods of Christmas and February half term when there's a lot of inexperienced skiers around and there's busy slopes also. Now I was not first aid trained on any of my seasons but the staff training I was given told that when a situation arises you either contact the mountain patrol, the ski patrol or the emergency services to allow them to deal with the issue. But in one such incident I was in fact involved as a translator between parents and emergency services in relation to a teenager who had suffered a concussion. And carrying on from that later on that same day, I then had to help with this incident and in actually carrying this young lad into the ambulance. Quite an intense experience for me as a young 20 year old. Um, and I should also mention that after all of that had subsided, there's then paperwork that needs to be done. Um, and following up an incident report like that is not a nice thing to do, especially when there's a severe injury. Second on the list is staff sackings. Yep, it happens on a ski season too. I've mentioned several times before that you play hard but you work just as hard, if not more, on your ski season. You turn up on time, you be a professional even if you are hungover. But unfortunately not everybody does that and poor professionalism and misconduct can land you in hot water. The turnover of ski season staff is always very, very high. And if someone is not heading home because of an injury or homesickness, then getting sacked is probably a very strong reason why they have gone home. Now, in one such incident that I can recall, someone didn't even last the first night. They had way too much to drink and they tried starting a fight. It totally disrupted all the colleagues and they were gone the next morning. The lesson here, guys, is don't be an idiot and you'll last the full season. Thirdly, lost luggage. Now, this happens a lot more than you'd actually think, especially at certain airports. <coughs> Chambry. <coughs> It can be a massive inconvenience to guests because their holiday could be ruined before it's even started. They've not got their suitcase full of all of their ski clothing or their underwear and toiletries for the week. And whilst it's entirely not your fault as the rep, it's your responsibility to solve the issue. The first thing that we always tell our guests to do is they need to fill out a PIR. Now that is a property irregularity report and basically that just tells the airport that you're missing your piece of luggage. You don't know whether it's been stolen or it's just not arrived on the flight with you. Then we make sure we get you onto your coach and get you up to resort. More often than not, your suitcase arrives at the airport a little bit later on that day and we just stick it on a later coach and get it up to you to resort that evening. But in one of the worst case incidents, uh, I had a guest who didn't have any of their uh, ski clothing for the Christmas week, the one of the most important weeks of the ski holiday. And so as a solution, I ended up lend lending her my staff salopette so that she could go out on the mountain that week enjoy your holiday with the rest of her family and not just be sat in the hotel feeling down in the dumps. 
So next we have stolen skis and this is probably one of the worst things that could happen to you on a ski trip or a ski season. Sadly it does happen quite a bit in some of the larger party resorts and that's because organised crime or for gangs it's an easy target for them to just drive up in the afternoon with a van and they will pinch any skis that they can find left unattended outside bars and restaurants and then they will just disappear like that very very quickly. I learned the hard way about not leaving your skis outside the same place two nights in a row. My own skis got pinched in my first year. Total rookie mistake. Now if you're using rental skis on your ski trip or your season, it's quite common for someone to accidentally pick up yours thinking that they're theirs and that's because um, rental skis are often a lot of the same colours. Um, so you have always need to find some way to kind of distinguish your skis from anybody else's. But in the event that your skis are actually stolen, the first thing you need to actually do is you need to file a police report. You need to go down to the local police station and say that these were stolen. Because only then once you've got a police report can you claim through your insurance. That's if you've got insurance. Fifth on the list is flight delays, diversions and cancellations, another transfer day related issue. Now notice how a lot of what is going wrong is entirely out of your control, but you are in the thick of it. Airport day is the busiest day of the week. It's a massive operational task for big and small companies alike with a lot of logistics required. Now, for delays and cancellations, this requires us to reorganize who goes on what bus and what time that bus then leaves. That then has a knock-on effect in terms of when these guests would arrive into resort and that needs to be communicated to the staff who are in the resort as well as the hotels to ensure that the guests can get dinner. Now, failure to do that last bit can land you a lot of complaints. It's easily missed. But if you get it right, you won't have issues the next morning. Trust me on this. Now, for diversions, though, this is a massive time sapper. Now, if you are going into a French airport, it's quite common that you might be diverted from Chambry because of bad weather into Geneva and Lyon. Same thing if you were going to get diverted trying to get into Innsbruck or Salzburg, they'd send you over to in Munich in Germany if you were trying to get into Austria. Now, that's at least three hours extra to the transfer day because the coaches have then got to go from the original airport to the new airport to pick up these guests and in some cases you as a rep have to go with that coach. A very long day, it's an incredibly tiring day with very little reward from it. And finally the weather. Now believe it or not it does actually snow in the mountains and guests can find this incredibly frustrating and boy will they be sure to tell you about it. You can't control the weather, but a snowstorm will massively disrupt your transfer day for you and your guests. It can lead to missed flights home and overnight stays in gymnasiums and hotels by the motorway. Now, if you are doing a day where you're going to the airport, always try and get sent to Geneva. Because if things do go wrong, it's highly likely you're going to end up in the Hilton because it's the only place that ever has room in Geneva. In resort, high winds and snow can severely disrupt public transport and also the ski lifts themselves as well. Now this again disrupts a customer's holiday because they can't use their lift passes. So guess who has to go around sorting out refunds for the day of missed skiing? That's right, you guessed it. So there you go guys, that's what happens when things go wrong on a ski season. Now I am sure there are countless other examples and stories of when things have gone perhaps far worse and that's what I want to hear from you guys today in the comments section below. Tell me a time when you've been on a ski trip or on a ski season when things have gone drastically wrong. Put it in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to reading some of these. Thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. Don't forget to like this video. Also show the channel some love and hit that subscribe button. We've pushed past 550 subscribers now too. Thanks everyone who's come on board. Thanks very much for watching. Look after yourselves guys and I will see you again next time.